Okay, so um, there's one more thing to discuss with the community, um, and that is renaming the project. So back in, wow, <laughs> 1995, um, I picked the name Bro as, uh, as the original paper says, an Orwellian reminder that uh, with the power of monitoring comes the power to violate privacy. And uh, you know that, that has been near and dear to my heart um, ever, ever since that time and continues to be. It really creeps me out to be building such awesome privacy violation, viol potentially privacy violating technology. Uh, on the other hand, it thrills me to build awesome network security technology. And that tension's fundamental. And so it, it was fundamental enough that I wanted the name to reflect it. We've been discussing at previous BroCons um, that the name today is just really sends the wrong message. Nobody is hearing that name thinking George Orwell. Um, they're instead thinking about bro culture, um, which is a really anti-inclusive message. Um, and indeed, you know, we heard at uh, BroCon um, 16 and 17 people recounting how they would go to their management and say, hey, well, I want to try this bro thing. The management would say, you have got to be kidding. Just could not believe that that could be any sort of uh, mature software project. It just seemed like a complete um, uh, tone-deaf uh, recent you know, uh, lark. And so um, we gave this a lot of thought. And, you know, and as the originator of the name, I gave it a lot of thought. But to me and to others on the leadership team, uh, it was clear, this is, you know, we want to be in today looking forward and, uh, you know, it's, it's regrettable to have to lose a name that has uh, a lot of history to it and means a lot to people and it's provided great puns, um, but that was the right thing to do in, in multiple ways. And so um, after BroCon last year, we suggested community, uh, to the community to make suggestions got more than 400, and even after weeding out the complete trolling, <laughs> <coughs> got more than 300. And uh, in fact, the trolling got weeded out like on day two of this process, this month-long process. So there would have been an enormous amount of trolling otherwise, um, in part because we got press as being wimps to you know, change our name from uh, the manly bro uh, just due to political correctness considerations, which I mean, my, my idea is just, you know, it's far from how, uh, how we actually reflected on, on the, the need to change. And so, and these names had all sorts of sensibilities and rationales from the, you know, um, quite clever to the sort of, you know, whimsical, ridiculous and, and the like, and there, there were a lot. Um, and, and we struggled. So the leadership team went through them and um, called out ones that they thought we thought were viable and uh, had to remove a lot because they would have issues with rights. They would either uh, infringe on a right or they would sound a whole lot like some company out there and it just, that wouldn't be good. And at the end of all that, um, we didn't have a viable set. We didn't have agreement on how to move forward. So, we decided to engage with a branding team to try to find candidate names. And, uh, and th this is an interesting process. If you haven't been through it, it, it's a lot less glib than you would think it is. And in particular, um, part of what the branding team does is ask you to surface, you know, what do you care about? What, what are you trying to convey? Um, and so the connotations that we put together were, well, you know, we, the tool is really cool because it provides insight and visibility. Like that a lot. Um, we really value the quality behind the name Bro, the fact that, you know, the thing is solid. It's going to um, do what it says, and, and, it's, we're, and if it's weak at something, we try to expose that fact, and like so we wanted to convey that soundness. We wanted to convey that, you know, it's flexible. It's a, like a platform, you can build on it, you got all sorts of possibilities. 
And we liked the academic heritage of Bro, and, and in particular, Lawrence Berkeley National Lab, which is the birthplace of Bro and, and has played a vital role in its evolution all, since the mid-90s uh, and continues to today. And so, all, you know, those, that's the wish list, and you're not going to get all that at all. And as, as we explored this and got candidate names and kicked them around and the like, um, we identified that, you know, we're, we have a fondness for these quirky names. So a lot of, a lot of what comes out of the branding team is, is names that are, you know, they're, they're um, kind of polished. And, and we, we realized as we were trying to assess, you know, why does that one not really uh, 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 pop out for us that we like these quirky names? And one name, quirky name, goes all the way back to uh, Bro's origin at LBL in the 90s. Uh, and it grew on us as we discussed it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> now, I've been through naming before. And uh, I have learned this truth that you know, generally, you're not going to like the name. You know, at the end of the day, changing names are hard and you don't get everything you want, right? I, I showed you the four things we wanted. We're not going to get that. Um, however, I also learned that, you know, a bit of time, you actually, the, the name is just, just the name. So given that, I want to tell a little bit of history. So there we are back in the mid-90s, the network research group at Lawrence Berkeley Lab. And um, you know that group for producing TCP dump and libpcap and BPF and bro and uh, other stuff. And, and we were um, big fans of the far side uh, back at, at LBL. And one cool thing about the far side was, you know, it has a great source of names. You know, like, like Fifi is just an awesome name and Muffin there. And, uh, you know, here's another one where, uh, you know, Sparky, that's, that's a great name. Really like Sparky. And then uh, there's these more sort of out there names like you know the mailman, yeah, that that's a that's a pretty out there name. Um, or you can you know kind of go beyond names and start thinking about names like sucker up. <laughs> and so here is the er email from where we're going. And I like how Craig, so Craig was a member of the group, still is, um, how he starts this. The things you figure out what well out drinking. And so Craig's trying to fix up some Kerberos problem, et cetera. But in the middle of this email he sent me uh, in March of 95, he says, what should we call the, the account? Montrace monitor tracing account. The account, the pseudo account, Unix account associated with the monitoring, the 24 seven monitoring you know, scripts and so forth they're putting together. And he says, how about the name Zeke? Comes from the far side. And I replied to him uh, a couple days later saying, I've got a fire, far side calendar, and today's is the legendary old Zeke and the chainsaw, that last one you saw where Zeke could fire that sucker up. And sure enough, um, that's the name. And this is the oldest email I could find. And, and it's only buried in there, but you'll see that the, uh, the actual user sending this email was Zeke at localhost. So uh, with that, uh, I want to prepare you for this notion. <laughs> and, <laughs> Thanks. and if you go to Zeek.org right now, uh, you will find the Zeek network security monitor. Um, <laughs> And if you go outside right now, you will find Zeke t-shirts and laptop stickers. So with that, uh, we're on our break.